Hi, this is uh, Dominic Giles, and I just wanted to talk about some uh, new functionality we've added to advanced compression in 12.102, and that's support for new index compression. What I'm going to start by doing is uh, running a baseline against the SOA scheme, and this is a small benchmark that ships with the Swingbench product. What I'm trying to do is find out what the typical transaction rate we can achieve on this small server is. So uh, we'll leave this running for a while. We'll let the transactions uh, settle down. And what I'm hoping to see is in the region of about 490, 500 transactions a second. And this is with normal indexes, normal B-tree indexes with no compression. And there's a, a, about uh, 30 to 40 indexes on this particular schema. We're going to look at a particular table that's the customer's table for no other reason than it's a, a, something that we'll all understand. It's a relatively good contact because it's got a number of indexes on top of it. So here we go. It's running about 500 transactions a second. So let's stop that and um, we'll go through and uh, take a look at uh, some of the background to these indexes. So let's exit and uh, bring up uh, SQL Developer. So uh, before we go any further, let's take a look at the indexes we currently have. So this is just a, a query accessing the user indexes table. And what we can see is that uh, I've got uh, five indexes uh, on this particular table, and they range from about 160 megabytes in size down to about 70 megabytes in size, so they're not very big, um, but they're uh, relatively good examples. Now, um, uh, I, I've got a mix here of primary keys, which isn't going to be compressible, and um, some date indexes and some functional indexes and so on, so it's, it'll give us a relatively good spread. So uh, let's just collect the measurements and stick those in a table for the time being so we know exactly what we're dealing with. We can compare them with the new size indexes. So I've just copied the measurements into a table for us. And uh, now let's go through and create the new compressed indexes. Now what we can see here is there's a new keyword on the create index for us and that's um, compress advanced low. Um, so that's the current option that we have available to us at this point in time. What that will do is it will attempt to compress the index for us using um, an adaptive algorithm, so an adaptive duplicate key compression um, against um, the B tree indexes. So let's go ahead and create those indexes for us. And as I said, we've got about five indexes to build, and this is going to take um, a little while to do. So um, let's come back when those are finished. Okay, so uh, all of those indexes are created now. Um, so as before, what we can do is go through and take a look at um, the sizes of those indexes. And so four of the indexes uh, should now be um, compressed. So let's run that query. So you can see here that we've got um, a primary key, obviously, that wasn't um, compressed. Um, but we can see that we've had a reduction in the size of most of those indexes. But it might be easier if we go through and take a look at that information inside of a chart. So let's uh, collect those index information again save it into the database and then um, I've got a, a little report here it just produces a graph for us that will enable us to go through and see the differences in the size of these indexes and what we can see is that on the whole most of the indexes apart from the primary key have um, dropped in size now this is um, not your typical schema. There's an awful lot of randomized values. There's no natural skews and data and so on. So um, you're likely to see better compression ratios than we're actually looking at this point in time. And they'll range from between one and a half to three times um, compression of your B-tree indexes, which are the useful uh, value to actually have. But again, as I mentioned before, this will be on uh, all of your um, non-primary key indexes. So let's um, just to make sure that we haven't um, introduced any degradation in terms of performance by using these index. Let's start Swingbench up again and run our transactions against the compressed index inside of the database. And again, um, what we should be looking to, to achieve here is where we were before, which is about 490 to 500 transactions a second with exactly the same um, uh, performance, we had late, same latency we had in the previous versions. And that's the good news about this particular feature. There's no um, downside in actually going through and compressing the indexes. There's only upside in that your indexes are smaller, which means that they take less space on disk and potentially you can get more of them inside of your buffer cache. So there is a potential opportunity to improve performance. So that's the new um, advanced index compression inside of Oracle Database 12102.